Hello everyone, so for today I'm going to show you guys how to go about trimming your carpet without creating a mess of your tank. The thing that you are seeing on the screen currently is actually a hook for you to hook it on to your pail while you are doing water change. And this is the siphoning hose that I'm using. The red pump that you are seeing on the siphoning hose is actually the pump for you to do the priming. And before you actually do a trimming on your carpet, it's actually best for you to turn off all your filters so that your trimmings would not be blown all around the tank and you start the priming of your siphoning hose and once the water gets priming this is where you actually get your trimming scissors and get about to trimming your carpet the carpet in my tank is actually a mini hair grass which I have just planted roughly less than a month ago it was from those tissue cultured cups and uh, it took roughly two to three weeks for it to actually carpet densely as you can see now. And as you know, mini hair grass is actually a very troublesome carpet to trim because uh, they are actually very fine. And uh, when the trimming starts to happen and you don't actually siphon them out as you trim, there will be a lot of these uh, very fine hair grass on the tag. And uh, if you forget to even uh, off your filter during this trimming, okay, it will like just be leaving a mess all around. So many of uh, you might be actually asking the question of uh, why do you actually have to trim your carpet regularly because having a dense carpet is actually a really nice in the planted aquarium okay but the reason that you have to actually trim them regularly is because once your carpet get too dense or too thick especially when you have Monte Carlo carpet or HC Cuba as your carpet okay and they get too thick the carpet at the bottom will be overshaded by the thick carpet on top so what happens next is that those at the bottom will start to rot and melt and this will actually cause an ammonia spike in your tank and when the plants or the carpet at the bottom starts to rot okay it will start to attract algae and uh, this is where your tank will start to have some algae blooms issues and stuff like this so it's actually a really good practice for you to trim your carpet regularly and uh, one thing to know is that uh, the more you trim your carpet okay, the faster they will grow back yeah, and it will grow back denser yeah, so in a sense most people that feel that they should just leave their carpet alone and uh, let it get as thick as possible over time is actually getting a dense carpet at a slower rate as compared to if you actually trim them regularly for the bald patch in the middle that you guys are seeing in the video currently that's because previously I actually have a feeding dish it's sort of like just a glassware where you actually put your food, fish food and stuff on it so that the fishes will actually eat inside and not uh, make a mess all over the tank yeah and uh, since the feeding dish was actually placed there the carpet was actually sort of uh, forced to not uh, carpet over that specific area but uh, I have since uh, removed it and uh, shift it to the other end of my tank which is on the left side because uh, I have did some revamp to my tank and uh, removed the big centerpiece driftwood which I have previously in this current tank so now what you're going to see in the video is uh, how good this siphoning uh, hose is okay because most of the siphoning hose when you actually press them down into the soil or the substrate level okay they will actually suck up, suck up the soil together with all the debris but for this one that I'm currently using you can see that most of the soil are just uh, hovering around the lower level of the siphoning hose whereas all the tiny debris are being sucked up so what I do for my water change weekly is that I would divide my tank into three different parts the back, the middle and the front and then I divide it into another two more parts the left and the right side so for every Wednesday when I do a water change I would actually try to siphon the substrates on the left side and the back of the tank and on Sunday it will be the right side and you rinse and repeat all over again every week and by doing so you ensure that your substrate is actually relatively clean the reason why you would not want to clean the substrate all at a go during a single water change is because it might actually stir up too much of the food waste or like maybe the 
ammonia pockets or air pockets that is being trapped under the soil so when you actually clean them out all at one go you'll be releasing so much ammonia which might actually affect your fishes and livestock and might also cause your bacteria to have a uh, trouble handling the sudden surge in ammonia and uh, this would lead to maybe a tank crashing in the worst case scenario or the best way to go about cleaning and maintaining your tank is to actually do it slow and steady and always remember to trim your carpet regularly and not allow it to grow too dense and too thick and that will be all for today's video I have uh, actually planned on making and setting up a new 35cm cube tank so there might be a new video of me setting up the tank very soon and I hope you guys like the maintenance and uh, tutorial video that I've made for you guys today so if you guys actually like it do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you guys in the next video bye